Hello guys. Um, today we will be doing a longer video than usual. Um, I have been requested to make a video of how I pour my resin and how I mix it. So the first thing you will need is some gloves. The second thing you will need is some pouring cups. Now I used to use the big ones but I kind of felt, I started feeling bad about it because I was wasting a lot of resin and um, I figured I'd buy these small cups. I got them at the dollar store and they are so perfect because by experience now I know that I need three of these cups for uh, the mold that I use. I've been using this mold for the longest time because I'm just waiting on my molds that to arrive. So for now, um, we'll have to settle for this. Suck it up and just settle for this one, okay? <laughs> Oops, let me turn the light on, actually. I thought I could turn the light on. Oh, yeah. Oh, here it is. So I'm going to turn this light on. Maybe it's better for you to see. Here. So the first thing you need is gloves because resin is pretty dangerous and you don't want no chemical reaction, right? The second thing you will need is a level. It is very important to level the surface. You always want the bubble to be in the center, okay? So you got to play around a bit and this part is magnet so if you have a magnetic surface that works really well it just gets like you know stuck onto that. So you could just level this up and see like if whatever you're working on is leveled or not otherwise your mold will be thick on one side and thin on the other. So the leveling is very very important right. So um, we'll do that and the second thing the third thing you need is um, a mask. I will put this on when I start mixing my resin. I don't want to put it on now because you won't be able to hear me. I'm going to sound funny, right? So I will put this on in a minute. Give me some time. Um, another important thing, another important thing is um, these sticks. You can get them from any craft store, dollar store. So just plan all this out because I'm using three cups. So I'm going to use three sticks, okay? This is the third stick I'm going to use. And plan out your colors, plan out your design, because once you pour the resin, you have only half an hour. I say half an hour. Some people have 45 minutes, depending on the resin. The resin I'm using today is um, in Incredible Solutions. Um, this is amazing. I really like this. It's $99 for uh, a big bottle. Okay, this is this is huge. This one here, and then this one here. This is the hardener, and this is they go they go hand in hand. So you need you need um, one to one ratio. Got so. Um, Let's open this and start mixing the resin. And, uh, so you gotta plan out what you wanna do, right? Now I'm thinking I have these three cups. I'm gonna fill this up to the top. I'm gonna fill this up to the top. But this one is gonna be my color. If I wanna add some color, I'm gonna have like half of it. I'm not gonna fill it up because my mold doesn't require that much. It just, you just need two and a half of these and that's fine, you fill it up to the top, right? So, um, I'm gonna pour my resin and um, we're gonna be using the sparkles today. These are rose gold and I was thinking of a color to complement this so that we could just add like some color towards here and then if you want to add three colors, then you got to plan it out, okay? 
So I always like to do this. I'm gonna take this one. I'm gonna pour half of it, okay? See that? That's half. Now I'm gonna take the hardener. This is the part B, and I'm gonna pour half. This is a lot thicker. See how thick it is? Now, I have the experience to not measure it, but if you want to measure it, you will need a, a measuring cup, something that has like measurements on it. Um, I have one, but it's not in good condition. <laughs> I'll still show it to you. Um, it kind of looks like this. So, oh, I'm so sorry. It looks really bad. So if I was to say fill it up to the 100, the hardener would be up to 200. So this would be the hardener and this would be the the um the other the base the base coat and the curing agent like they would be half and half. So if you want this as a first timer you can go ahead and use it. Now I'm going to take my stick and start stirring it and um, mix it but don't go like crazy and mix it fast right because if you start mixing it fast then you'll see little resin bubbles and they start like flying in the air and it's very unhealthy you don't want to you don't want those resins right so now this is the this is the first batch and uh, I still have to stir it so I haven't forgotten that. Now I'm going to make a second batch. Okay. This one I'm going to fill up till here. Um, same thing. Half. Half and half, right? Okay. So let's do, yeah. This is perfect. I'm going to take a different stick and I'm gonna start stirring this. So you have to stir it for three minutes, okay? I'm gonna stir this, I know I have to stir this, I'm gonna have to stir this. Now you gotta start planning out your design. What do you wanna do? You know, you gotta plan that out. I think I'm gonna take the rose gold glitter and this one here is like full. I think I'm going to take that and put it in that, okay? Oh. <laughs> ah. Looks kind of crazy. Oh wow, I like how that's looking. Now the reason why I don't sprinkle it on top because you might be like, oh that's a lot of glitter, I'll just sprinkle it on top. No. The reason why you don't do that is because when you try to torch your work, like the bubbles that you have in your work, when you try torching that, all the glitter that comes on top will actually burn. So you don't want any glitter on top. Now this way everything is embedded. Now, this is still transparent. This one here, I'm thinking of adding this to it. Um, you see this color? It's not exactly rose gold, but it's an eyeshadow powder, which makeup powder and eyeshadow powder are the same thing. So if you have any loose eyeshadow powder at home, feel free to use that, okay? So I'm just gonna pour this here and see what color that gives me. You see that color? It's kind of like, um, it's not bad. I think it, it really complements, it really complements the rose gold in a way. But I've never tried this before. This is just an experiment. And uh, <laughs> you see that bubble? I saw one. So you see how it has texture and it's still translucent? 
keep stirring it. You want to add more, you can add more. But for this look, because I'm mixing, like we're doing like a mix half and half, I don't want to put too much because I still want um, the glitter to be the highlight of the show. I still want it to be uh, be the show shop, showstopper, show shopper, <laughs> so showstopper. I want that to like shine through that. Okay. So, what do you think of this color? Do you think we should leave it, or do you think we should? It doesn't complement it that much. What What do you think we should do? Now, sometimes while you're working with stuff, you get all these ideas. How about we mix some pink into this so that we can kind of get to that color, okay? We'll do that one minute. So, you can always add um, some color to your work. This is Craftsmark. Uh, this is Craftsmark. This is um, acrylic paint. Oh, I don't like that. It's settled to the bottom. I'm using a fresh stick, okay? So this color here is pink. So let's do that. Let's put like um, just a little bit of pink, not too much. And um, why not, right? Just a little bit. And see what happens. You see that? You, some people like to have a lot of texture in their work, but I'm just going to mix this up. Now, the thing with acrylic paints is it makes your work time, um, it cuts it down. It makes it slower, so pretty soon this is going to get hard. Like, not hard as a rock, <coughs> but hard. It's going to start hardening up. Let's put it that way, right? Now, um... I'm just going to leave it that way, okay? Okay, so now we're going to do a third color. You don't have to do three colors, okay? This one is going to be not too much, but just half, half, uh, half the cup. So this is the hardener. I'm going to put just a little bit of my hardener here and then this one I'm just going to put a little bit like equal equal parts okay make sure one is not more than the other like I said I have the experience so I don't measure any, anything anymore but I used to I used to measure stuff I remember I need another stick I'm going to get a brand new stick I'm gonna start stirring this up. If you look at my bottle, you will see that I've never been wrong about my mixture. You see how they're both almost the same? Like they're the same level and I'm not measuring anything. Like I said, it takes time, but you will you will learn, you will you know, get a hang of it. This is my third mixture, and this is just half a cup. What I like to do with this one is put some white. Now, the white that is brilliant and never fails is this casting craft. It's called um, epoxy resin, uh, it's, uh, it's called a pigment. Basically, these are pigments, so they're very compatible and uh, with the resin, and one drop is very pigmented. So if you, if I was to put like, I squeeze, squeeze it, and I just get like a few drops of it, okay? Now, this is wonderful. This is wonderful for creating um, those cells in your, and lacing in your work. Also, it's very good for um, the beach art that people do the beach the ocean waves um, and you can see 
how pigmented this is. You see that? And also it mixes so well, like it mixes very well. I love this stuff. Keep stirring everything. This is still, uh, you know when your spoon starts getting stuck, you know it's getting thick, which means you have a little bit of time to work with it, so do it fast. Now my spoon is not getting fast, uh, not getting, um, you see how I'm getting a good flow, which means I have a lot of time to work with this stuff. About, I would say about 20 minutes, right? Now this is the rose gold uh, chunky glitter. Okay. Now there's no right or wrong way of doing it. Unless you are crazy and you're trying to follow someone else's design and you saw that coaster and you're trying to mimic that, it's different, right? You're trying to do something. But I usually come here and I go with the flow, right? I don't try to recreate something someone has created because it, it it's never going to work out. Unless you're watching a video step by step, then you can do it. But you don't know how people, what people have done, how they've worked with their products, like, you know, their timing and their techniques. You don't know it unless you actually see them, see a video of it. So this is my white. Now you see how it's just a little bit. So I'm just going to um, apply the white in the corners of my work, which is the narrow, narrow corner, right? Now, one method of doing, one way of doing this is pour the white here, then take this, then pour it here, then take the color, pour it here, and then do like a rainbow thing. Keep going, 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 going. Follow the same pattern. That's one way of doing it. I've never done that. Should we do that? <laughs> I've never done that, actually. That sounds pretty cool. But the other way of doing it is having something in mind. Like, if you want the white here at the at the top, then you have to plan it. Because once I pour this white, it's gonna start moving everywhere. So to stop that from moving, I need to have something else ready to pour right there. Do you understand? Like if I have my white here, I need to have something ready, mixed, ready to go. What have I decided? I don't know. I think um, I'm just gonna pour and go with the flow. So right now I'm just gonna pour the white in the center. Okay. Can you see? Okay. Make sure your sticks are away from you. If you're done stirring, because you don't want to have a stick in your way when you're pouring. It's very exasperating. So I'm just gonna like do this now. Get the sticks away from me. So okay, let's pour guys. I'm gonna put my mask on. guys my camera died and um, I gotta do this fast before it dies again so I just took the white and I played around with it now comes the um, the torching part I'm gonna turn my torch on okay now you gotta watch what I'm doing and I will explain later what I'm doing okay you see those bubbles Sorry, my torch is... Here we go. Watch. Okay, 
you see just what happened so you gotta hit it and move your torch Just hit it and move your torch Just hit it and move your torch I don't want this flame to be touching the sides because once it touches the sides it bonds to it and it'll not come off it will take it'll take you forever see how the it's burning the glitter so you have to be very careful see so just like be careful go far i see some bubbles here you see those bubbles it's a cluster of bubbles right here right here watch watch what happens you see that right there i see some bubbles here you see that bubble there okay. now i just move the glitter around a bit in case i burn some i don't want burnt glitter to show right it, it looks pretty bad so i'm just gonna try to yeah so you can play with it if you want the design to be like a flower you can do that you know it's it's actually fun have fun with it don't be angry that, oh, I didn't do this, I didn't do that. Just have fun with it. Because every design is unique. You can make flowers, you know. You can do something else. Do whatever you want. You just have to play with it. Till you think, oh, okay, I like this. The other thing about the glitter is you have to push it down after you're done. You have to kind of like poke it because there's going to be air bubbles on the other side. The other side that you can't see right now. Tomorrow is going to be a surprise because all the bubble actually, you know, it will, it will make holes and you will be see, all you will see those air gaps. And you don't want that so now if you see any burnt glitter just um, take some more glitter and just put it here so that you can cover anything if you think there's any burnt glitter then you don't, you don't want it right you don't want to it to show through so you can put some of your sparkles on there. This way you can hide that layer of burnt glitter if there is any. I see some here, right? It happens, right? I have to get rid of those. I see some air bubbles here too, here. See that? Don't keep your torch there for a long time because you will burn it. If you want, you can put some more sparkles. You don't have to, but if you want, you can. And then, not too much, right? And then, again, you want these sparkles to go down, right? You don't want them up. Because it will just look bad if it's up. But it's not gonna look good. And now, whatever you've done, you can always go back with a flood coat. I'll do a flood coat in the next video so you know exactly what it is. A flood coat is like 
I'm done for the night and um, I just played around with all the colors and this is what I came up with. I'll be here in the morning and show you the results. Good night! Hello guys, it's been uh, way over 24 hours and I just came back downstairs um, in my art room to check how things are doing. So here you can see um, I use a microwave uh, dish and it's great as I cover it. This way I cannot have any hair or any debris or anything um, flying around here. There's like spiders too here. <laughs> Uh, so spider webs, you know, anyway, so I just used this and I think it's perfect um, And make sure the room is 24 degrees That the resin has to be at a warm temperature for it to cure if the room is cold It's just gonna take a long time also depends from resin to resin, right? Anyways, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna um, Unmold this and show you the first thing we do is it's very hard like a rock so the first thing we're going to do is crack like that and the second step is crack like that okay so this loosens up the edges now we got to go towards the outer edges and work them out so be patient with your molds do not do not uh, rip it apart sometimes the molds can get stuck you don't want to ruin your mold right so, uh, this one's out. This is, uh, I think I have to clean this off. This looks like some kind of mistake. This has to, uh, so this is what it looks like. You want me to turn the light on, guys? <sighs> Let me turn the light on for you. Okay, there you go. That's the first one. You see how hard that is and how beautiful the finish is of the resin? This is why I like this tabletop uh, Incredible Solutions. See how beautiful they turn out? And I didn't really plan or map out my design. I just went with the flow. <clears throat> this one here. You can use a sharp razor if you don't like sanding. Just use a sharp razor to cut these off. This will save you a lot of time. Okay. So I really like how the rose gold turned out. This is the last one. So um, the torch, remember I was telling you if you hit the torch too close to these lines, they will mold uh, they will actually uh, combine together the the resin and the silicone can actually have uh, some kind of chemical reaction and they actually bond together so you don't want that so that reason for that reason you have to be very very circumspect very careful when you're using your gun your torch you you want to make sure you don't go around the edges <clears throat> this is the last one <laughs> I like this one this is the best <laughs> What do you think, guys? Good? Sorry, I have so many messages coming on top and I can't keep up with them right now. I'm trying to make this video. So, yeah, so it's uh, I like it. Do you like it? <laughs> so this is just using eyeshadow powder. Remember, we used this eyeshadow powder. It's kind of like... um. I'm wearing gloves, I can't show you what color it is. Let me take my gloves off. It's this color. It's eyeshadows. So mica powder, eyeshadows powder, they're all the same thing. 
If you have any loose eyeshadows or if you want to scrape them out, that's fine too. They're very pigmented. You know that eyeshadows are very pigmented. So I didn't want to go spend $40 on makeup powders. I will when I, um, when I start selling a lot of work and I'm ready, you know, for bigger and better projects. But for now, I'll j I can just see how it's going, right? So there it is, guys. What do you think of these? Do you like them? <clears throat> what do you think? <laughs> they always have a different effect on the other side. Bye for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. Cheers.